Ministry back with you as we take another look at the surge of corona here in Florida. The Miami Herald has put together a great documentary, if you will, and I thought we could take a look at it. What do you think? Because the staff at these hospitals have been strained for now going into the third year. And I just started watching a few minutes of this, really, and it looks fantastic. So let's bring it up. Miami Herald documentary unit. Let's go full screen. Let's see if we can hear it. I never thought I'd have to live through anything like this. I can still that. I never thought there would be a virus this bad. I never, it was always just the movies. Just the movies that went bad. I would have never pictured this in a million years. It's having emotional connections with people and then watching them die. A lot of them die. Can I toss this? Can somebody push this? Where's the glider scope? Give me a glider. Where's the glider scope? Here's the tube. Here's the Florida tested positive for the coronavirus. Cases by the hour in Florida. A statewide stay-at-home order tomorrow night at midnight. The risk to the public remains low. I deal with it every day, so I know it is real. Days of the are long. And then you have to go into the patient's rooms. Patients have the virus. So he's been sick for three aware that his wife just tested positive? Like, I would drive home and I would think about all the times that I went into a room and how did I take off my gown? How did I take off my gloves? Thinking of every possible scenario that you did, whether you were bringing this home to your family today or not. Miami now the new epicenter of this pandemic, seeing record numbers of new coronavirus cases. I did not think we would become the epicenter. I did not think that you would see the virus politicized. We are over the government overreach, so we stand here barefaced, mask free. The end of the pandemic is in sight. We definitely have not won the battle with coronavirus. About 75% of the COVID patients who are getting on ventilators are dying in our hospital. And then you have to deliver the bad news. And it's just, I didn't want to do it anymore for a while. I don't want to make those phone calls. A hospital is a battleground. You are walking in to the open field of a virus that is ready to attack. This is literally a battle You're doing that. that they're fighting for us and nobody knows how to beat it right now. Inside the COVID unit, the front line. States across the country are looking for a way back to some form of normalcy as we continue to battle this coronavirus pandemic. We have the most vulnerable population in the country. That was why people said we were going to be worse than New York. That was why people said we were going to be worse than Italy. 
God. Those predictions have been false. Our work is succeeding. We have flattened the curve. We have all these, these extra beds and field hospitals, and nobody's there. Ah, oh my God. Jackson South is a community hospital, and because it's small enough, there's also a family component with all the nurses and all the staff. All right, this red stripe is where the COVID patients go, and that's the COVID elevator. We will not be using that. Apparently, Terry wasn't given that update. My nurses have always been very motherly. I call at least six of them mom. Second floor of the hospital is the COVID floor. Probably have to edit the part out when we wait in the elevator. Here is our ICU for COVID. And there is a floor for COVID. And these are all the nurses. It looks like they're all on break again. <laughs> I have been there for 13 years, watching that hospital in the ICU grow. Here is COVID ICU. I did not accept the role of ICU director thinking, all right, we're about to undergo a pandemic and I'm gonna lead this team through it. Uh, that was not the thinking um, at all. I don't know what this is doing, but it stops it and this is started over again three times. Yeah, because I'm okay. I'm controlling with my watch. Okay, okay. Just continuously film. Because I'm stopping with my watch. No, I'm stopping the phone calls with my watch. So oh. she can just film. Let's we go got see it. the patient. We got it. That first time I actually heard about COVID-19, it was just another virus. So this is a guy that yeah. the other day I wanted to try extubating just straight because I think he gets extremely agitated. Dr. White, yeah. Dr. White. But it really hit me that something was going on when I spoke to my people in Brooklyn. I trained in Brooklyn, so I was there for six years and I'm very close with them. One night I gave my old program director a call and once I really realized what these geniuses who taught me were going through, that next day I went to work and normally I don't have any fear. People just, I just make jokes all the time. I had an urgency that day and that's really when our hospital picked up the pace. So what are we doing? Same time, got to extubate. Okay. We, gotta, we gotta get our numbers up, we gotta extubate. Okay. All right, 19. These patients, the big problem is you can't get them off the ventilator. He got a fever overnight. They gave him Tylenol. White blood cell count came up. They've been on a machine with sedation and other meds for so long, the, the amount of atrophy is overwhelming. So now they just start stacking up, and that's very scary. He's just too weak. He just needs a trach. He can't get trach still. You got someone else? Yeah, I got 20. 20 years. The hospital is a 200-bed hospital, and the first wave of craziness was the end of March. This wasn't so much because we were getting a lot of COVID patients, but because of the testing taking a week at a time. We opened up a 14-bed old ICU, which is very cramped. Any other nurse? April is when we started getting better testing. So that was when we actually had our surge of 35 to 40 total COVID patients a day. And then we made the 24 bed ICU, the COVID ICU. Hey, what's up, so what's We're treating his infection. He's not really reacting today. He's getting dialyzed today. He's the one at the sun diet. Yeah. 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 At around the same time, my dad started getting very sick. I'm going to out the stones. He was battling cancer, and I'm an only child, so it made it even more difficult because it's just my. Uh, you don't have to. You know, we, we can skip this part. It's okay. When she heard the hospital wasn't allowing people to come in, I made a phone call so that she could come for palliative reasons. This is Dr. Pastewski, and one of the ICU doctors. Unfortunately, your mom's heart no. stopped. I spent eight days with my dad. He passed away at the end of March, and uh, I couldn't imagine not being there for my dad, like, you know, for his final days. I could not imagine. The next step for you would just be to contact a funeral home, and they will take care of uh, everything, and then all the next steps. 
It was because of that I realized oftentimes the family members are the ones who will survive this and we have to take care of them as well. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go talk to Sally. I gotta talk to Sally to hope for me. So we got one of the nurse anesthetists. She would spend hours just calling each and every family member. You know, it's a long process, but we're gonna take those steps to see how he does, okay? And then the community donated a few iPads and now she's FaceTiming. Okay. Who did I talk to? Come talk. He's awake, he's alert, he's trying to make contact with the world that he wants to get out of here. All right, what's extra bail? I've been expecting a surge to start next week for over a month now. All right, so we're going to go ahead with the excavation of You got to move the negative pressure. We now have gotten to kind of our plateauish scenario with the number of COVID patients, but we don't know how this disease really works. We don't know if these patients can get better. We don't know where we're going to be able to put them. So I think you'll see normalcy in appearance return because that is the push by politicians and the government and the people. But the stress on the hospital will be there for a very long time. This patient is being moved into a negative pressure room so we can attempt to extubate. Healthcare workers go into their profession wanting to save people's lives. You know, so this is what we do. But our families didn't make a decision in the career that we chose. So I just got in from work. A little tired. Uh, it's my fifth day in a row. Dr. Andrew was nice enough to buy everybody in the unit today. Some tacos, just left some leftovers, and that's what I'll be eating for dinner tonight. This pandemic has completely changed my family. It's gone from me being with my family every day to me just disappearing. Hi. Hi. Hey, man. Come to Hi, the girl. Hi. Bobby? Hi, old guy. The reason why I separated from my family was because we had a patient that had tested negative. He tested negative for coronavirus. At this point, we had never had a false negative, so we trusted it. I'm telling you, he's like wired. <laughs> we went in with a regular yellow mask, no N95, no gown. They tested him like three days later, again. He was positive. So now I'm like, I've been going home all these days. I am you. Then from one moment to the next, my 14 month old daughter spikes a fever of 103. So now I'm freaking out. I, I was sure a hundred percent that this was my fault, that my daughter now has a fever. She most likely has the virus. I gave it to her. I was, I was angry at myself for still coming home. Emmy's sleeping. The next day she woke up fine. It was just her teeth that were coming out, but that night was the night that I told Elizabeth, I was like, I can't, I, I can't stay home. I did tell her when the numbers go down that I'll be the first one home. So I'm hoping that that happens soon. Hi, Good night, brother. Good night. I love you. I miss you guys. I miss you too. We miss you too.
Governor Ron DeSantis held his first phone call today with a task force aimed at reopening the state's economy. The latest numbers show there have been more than 1.7 million unemployment claims in Florida, but so far only a small portion of them have been processed and even fewer have led to payments. And new mobile testing sites are opening daily across South Florida. The latest site is now open at Marlins Park. And you can see a long line of cars, drivers waiting to get tested for COVID-19 at the Hard Rock Stadium in Miami Gardens. Over the weekend, a series of coordinated protests demanding the U.S. reopen for business have popped up. It's, it's getting a little rough out there. People need to go back to work. It's a push to reopen despite numbers continuing to go up in Florida. Statistics some protesters say they aren't afraid of. We won't wear masks. We won't social distance from people who we feel, who we know are healthy yeah. as well. And if we do have a spike, we'll, we'll cross our bridge when we get there. So about 10 days ago, I had an exposure to a COVID positive patient. He was initially COVID negative. When I rounded on him, I didn't like what I saw. I repeated the test and he ended up being positive the next day. Since then, I've taken the hydroxychloroquine. However, this drug does have issues with causing abnormalities in the cardiac rhythm. I'm gonna have my nurses do an EKG on me to see if any abnormalities have shown up because I did develop chest pain today. I'm exposed every day. Now, I take a lot of precautions, but that particular case, I didn't take the best precaution. The QTC is 462, it was 472 yesterday, so I dropped it on a hurt I did have my N95 mask, but all the nurses did not. That next day, when he was positive, I went to administration, and everyone gets N95s now, and that's the policy now. Everyone is getting the masks. And yeah, in an ideal world, we would test everybody every day before work, but we didn't have the capability to do that because there were just not enough tests. So nobody would get tested unless they actually have symptoms. The nurses so far have been fine, and I'm not coughing, don't have mucus, don't have a fever. try to take as many precautions as we can. He has a system where he comes in through the side door, he decontaminates, showers, before he even comes into the house. But it is absolutely scary. And we have talked about different options, like should he stay in the, in the hotel and not come home for months at a time. A ball, a bone, a collar, what is all this? You see where this is going? My biggest fuel is the kids. I need them. I need to come home to them. All right, songs. And yes, I'm probably gonna get some flack about that. You're putting them at risk for your own needs and that sort of thing, but they also need their dad. Yes. You make me happy when skies are gray. I don't think we could do it for months. Go to sleep, princessa. Hello. Hey, I'm outside. Okay. Being away from my family is honestly probably one of the hardest things I've ever had to do in my life. Hi. Hi, Emmy girl. Hi, Mama. How are you? Hi. Can you say hi?
I love you, baby girl. Seeing her like flipping out, wanting to be with me. Um, is, it's, I think that's the hardest part. Bella understands. Be careful. But Julito and Emmy are too little. I can't tell them, hey, listen, there's a pandemic going on and I can't hold you. I miss my whole family. I love you. Uh, every day. Bye. Every day. Dozens of public places will open in Miami-Dade and Brownwood counties, but not everyone is on the same page. In a news conference yesterday, the county mayor said he felt confident parks, waterways, and golf courses could reopen with rules. That require everyone to take personal responsibility and act as if they had the coronavirus. But also today we heard from the city of Miami. The mayor there, Francis Suarez, telling us they think it's too soon. We want to make sure that what we do it does not create a scenario under which we have to reverse course. So two mayors, two distinct viewpoints there, and a community test starting in this county on Wednesday. Will people follow the rules? We always knew at some point things were going to open up and we were just going to have to see if it went well or if it was a huge mistake. As somebody who is literally putting himself at risk to see if it went daily well if it was and seeing this huge isolation thing. work, I'd sure love to see it going on for a bit longer. The scariest thing is I am such a hypochondriac now. I have a little handshake now that I don't normally have. Like I just notice it when I'm doing little stuff. I don't know if it's that COVID. I know my partner, Dr. Lorero, extubated two more COVID patients today. Uh, one is looking kind of iffy. He's elderly. He's got such severe muscle weakness from being intubated for so long. He was already extubated once, last three days, and had to go back. So we, we don't feel very good about that. But it's a really sad case because his son was our first ICU death. So his the patient's wife already lost her son and has a good chance of losing her husband from the same disease. That was a really hard day for me. The day of Washington's son. His mom was calling him on the cell phone while we were intubating. She was a little upset. Yeah. The last thing he said was, 
why do we have to be so aggressive? I told him that he was going to be fine and that he was going to go to sleep and we were going to put a ventilator and let his lungs rest. That kind of plays in your mind like Okay, let's go. Do the dance. Yeah, that's the best ever papa dance. Uh-oh. <laughs> when the father came into the ER, it was more of, let's try to get him out of here because of his wife that just lost her son. So she wouldn't lose two of them in a month. A husband and a son in less than a month. Oh, Lord. This thing's real, man. This thing is real. From the Miami Herald, there's uh, several parts to this, but we're going to do the first part that we just did, and we'll do the other parts separately. Makes you think. I hope. It's no joke. Okay, let's go. Do the dance for Papa being the best Papa ever. All right, let's do the second <laughs> part. Uh oh. <laughs> Only thing I remember is Derek started coughing. I said something is not right, and so I shoot over to the hospital with Derek. He went in the hospital one day, and the next day he was gone. He died on April 3rd. My husband, he never had a cough. He never complained of a fever, but he was acting a little strange. He went into the hospital on the 9th. This is a picture of Kenneth and I. When they told me that my husband had the COVID, I had just lost my son, but I'm a woman of faith. We got everybody. Here we go. Here's Kim. And my husband had cancer three times, and it's been so many times that God had mercy, and my husband made it through. So my husband is going to fight this just like he always has. And I've asked God to help him. Maybe God is going to intervene, and he's going to live. Inside the COVID unit. This is a CAT scan of a COVID patient. As, as we scroll down, you can see this is kind of what normal lungs should look like, but this thick, fluffy white stuff, that's the COVID. And this stuff actually can move around, and that's why we recommend people get on their stomach and improve their oxygenation. So this is a rotoprone bed. This is a special bed designed to rotate the patient. And this is a last ditch effort when our bench settings are maximized and we're not oxygenating appropriately. Oh. 
this is one of the quiet the rooms that I I document in. So this is one of the few rooms I'll take my mask off and this is probably from just wearing the mask for the last half an hour. Today I saw all the COVID patients on the floor. This is the medical surgical patients, the ones that aren't as sick as the ICU, but we are going there to make sure that they're still doing well. How you doing? Hey, are we able to get any of them out of bed, the chair at all? When I do the rounds on the COVID patients on the floors, I'm trying to catch the patient before they code, stop breathing so that we can do the intubation process early, safely. Intubation is the process of putting the tube down the throat and then connecting them to the ventilator. We have not seen a COVID surge here, but we're still having active cases. We're just handling it. We get three new ones today, yeah, but we discharge two. So it's not that COVID's not out there, it's that we're busting our asses, taking care of it. The whole hospital, from the top down, they've all just stepped up significantly. And I was screaming one day, that why do we have older nurses taking care of COVID patients? They're the highest risk. They volunteered. How do you say no to that? What do you say to that? Come on, I was telling them you guys were special. Can any of you actually act special? Nope. All right. Incidentally, I am very proud of each and every one of you. Nurses don't go into this job because they like cleaning code browns all day long. Now grab those signs and on. Doctors don't go into this job because we love paperwork and dealing with insurance companies. All of us have some genetic defect where we all want to be heroes and help people. Hey, you're in the chair. All right. Look at you. Good job. It's really annoying. I would have, I would have been a really good like, sports agent or lawyer, made a lot of money, would have been on the sidelines of all the games. I would have had a lot of fun. Um, I wouldn't have gotten married, I'm sure. <laughs> you want to say hello to Grandma Kay? Hi, Grandma Kay. I can't wait till we go take our long walks again. Are you looking forward to that? Yeah. And the babies? The babies are good. Not really, I mean, the baby doesn't know what's going on. <laughs> and Lexi's having fun because um, Mike's down. Thank you. We love you and miss you too. Bye, Mrs. K. Let's actually see what time Daddy can come home today. Andrew, he says I tricked him <laughs> because he's like he never wanted to settle down. When you settle down, then you have children, you have a family. A baby is saying I love you. <laughs> You're more vulnerable. Baby. And he doesn't want to feel feelings. Yes, he does put up a front. I don't cry because I'm not a human. You know, like this is an empty area inside here. Nothing pumps blood out of it in this area, but I don't cry unless I've had wine. So I don't think you're gonna see tears on me. But they always say that the people who put up that tough front are the ones who are very, are actually very vulnerable and they do that for a reason. I think it's time to get ready for bed. What do you think? No! And that's very much like him, not that he would want me to say that, but he has a huge heart. Walk. Walk. Up, 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 up. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. For a lot of patients that, even though he does everything right and then they pass away, he, sometimes he feels responsible for that. And he takes that to heart. What's up, man? How was your day? Started off a bit rough. It's just the mental toll, sure. the whole people, that, you know, getting scared and all that stuff. Mr. Washington, who's 
son was our first mortality. Something is making his heart go fast. Are you still feeling weird? No, I didn't feel anything weird today. You think it's anxiety? I don't have emotions. Oh, gosh. Finally, today, I sat around and I said, all right, look, let's all just talk about what could be going on with him. And one by one, the nurses went through everything they could think of, and unfortunately, we've already been doing all of it. And the answer at the end of the day is probably this is just COVID, and we can't figure it out yet, and we don't know how to handle it, and it's scaring everyone. You want to FaceTime him? Here we go. I'm going to call you, okay? His wife FaceTimes, and Terry talks to her all the time. Come on, honey. No, you're in my prayers and in my heart. And he's not responsive, but he can sense. That's everything to this woman. It meant the world to me. He's over there and I see you, and they're doing everything they can, he doing everything he can. Dad, come home. I'm missing. Sure he misses you too. Oh, I know. Dad, I'm missing you. Is it the is it the mom? Is it the dream? I miss you, Dad. Is he gonna beat this? My husband's going to fight. But I know the doctors and the nurses are putting their lives on the line for people that they don't know. So I'm grateful for them because they have families too. So today is a uh, moving day, packing everything up. Jackson got a location for us to be able to stay for their employees that want to uh, quarantine themselves away from their family. The whole COVID thing started, I was the first one that I was like, sign me up. I'm in that unit all day. Uh, can I flip this? Oh, yeah, there we go. Let me see the kitchen. It's a nice apartment. That's really cool that they donated those to you guys. Look how big the TV is. <laughs> We could have said no. We're not getting paid extra to go take care of COVID patients. All right, bye. I love you, baby. I love you too. But this is my calling. If I need to expose myself to save somebody's life, I'm going to do it. We just did a blood gas on the patient. The oxygen was really low, so we put her on the BiPAP. I told her that we were gonna lay her flat on her stomach to help with her breathing. So we're gonna try that out to see how that works. I am on the front lines of this pandemic, yes. But I mean, just because you're exposing yourself to a deadly virus. That doesn't make you a hero. Huh? Was it all the Yeah, it was 97 when you started. You improved it one percentage point. Well done. <laughs> the real heroes are the people that are in the background. Good morning. The people that are supporting us and making sure that we're okay to go to work the next day. Here you go. <sighs> to me, that's my wife. Let me give you. No, I don't want banana. She's pretty much a single mom right now. And she's been doing it for a month. Oh, look who walked in. Hi, morning. Morning. Hi, morning. People say, oh, Healthcare workers are heroes, and uh, uh, all this stuff. But my wife is my hero. Bye. What you doing? He slept in Abba's yesterday. You did, and why? <laughs> Julio. He loves his job. 
He loves what he does. I just got canceled. You got canceled? Oh, because today was overtime? And I'm terrified of what he does. Night shift? Okay. But that's not the topic of conversation when he calls because I'm trying to stay positive for him. Get down. Oh, she wants you to get out of there. How funny. You're so funny. And I don't have the luxury of sitting there and thinking about it and letting it get to me because... Oh, you're going to drop everything. Babe, isn't your meeting at 10? They moved it. Oh, they moved it to 11. I have to feed my kids. Why are you? Where are you? I'm working. Do you want your pouch? No? Okay, I'll give you chocolate milk now. And I have to dress my kids and I have to entertain my kids. You go outside? Yeah. Ready? One, two, three. This dead is all over the floor, kids. Careful, bebe. And then I have to teach kids. Can you hear me? Oh, I can't hear you. Oh, hi. 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 <laughs> two minutes. Mom, I need to hear this. I'm gonna mute myself, sorry. <laughs> I missed half of that meeting, I have no idea what happened. Probably when it hits me the most. Hello? Yeah. Is when I see him talking to my kids and them getting sad and... Oh, babe, I forgot you were there. Sorry. <laughs> Who's coming? No, he's not here. He thought I meant you were here. No, Machi, I'm sorry. He's here. Look, he's on the phone. Oh, he's not here. No, Machi. Talk to him. He ran off. That was my bad. My bad. Sorry, that's a soft spot. <laughs> yeah, this is taking a toll on my kids. Um, this virus literally broke my family apart. <laughs> Sorry. It's done nothing but just break us apart. And, um, I just wanted to end already. <laughs> yeah. Tonight, one million cases. A sobering milestone as America begins to reopen. But the nation's top infectious disease expert is warning those numbers could grow significantly if the country pushes to reopen too quickly. There's no doubt in my mind that when you pull back mitigation, you're going to start seeing cases crop up. And if you're not able to handle them, you're going to see another peak. Today, though, Florida will take a step. Governor DeSantis has unveiled his plan to reopen the state. But Miami-Dade, Broward, and Palm Beach counties will be excluded from the plan. These counties have seen the lion's share of the state's epidemic, but they are trending in a positive direction. Today was a busy day, a lot of meetings. Actually, tomorrow is going to be worse, but... Mr. Washington, we found something that we can fix, and that's a big deal. So he's had the catheter in for dialysis, which he needs, and now we think that's the source of infection. So we've removed it, and we're hoping that uh, he will take a significant turn now. Okay, I'm ready to go inside. I think Mr. Washington has a chance. I think so. None of us can really control life or death. We do the best we can, especially doctors, they do everything in their arsenal to help, you know, save a patient. But sometimes no matter what you do, 
you know, it's their time. Last night while I was on call, we had two code blues. My nurse practitioner called me. He was running from the ER because our patient in bed 17, his heart stopped as well. This is Mr. Washington. He got reintubated. He did get a significant CPR medications and we did get him back. But I do know that when your heart stops once, that's usually a bad sign. You can do everything right and things can still go wrong. Got everybody. Here we go. Here. You're not in control of really anything. My first thought was, who's going to call his wife? How do we call her and tell her that now her husband has also lost the battle to coronavirus? Forty years ago, a wise woman, Mrs. Swanson, she said, one day you'll meet someone that will love all of you. And he did. That's my husband when he was going to Vietnam. Both my husband and my son died of COVID-19. And nobody should feel that kind of sadness. But I knew that the doctors, the nurses, everybody had did everything they could. Even the ones that could not save my family. I love them because they put their lives on the line to try to save my husband and my son. It just, it, it hits me a little bit when they thank you and you didn't quite get it done. I don't know, I had this one kid, his mom died, and, you know, I'd been working with her and him a few days, and when she passed, he came over and wanted to thank me, and he was, like, shaking, and then he was like, I, I just, I have to hug you, and he just hugged me for a while, just, thank you, thank you, thank you, and, you know, it's not what you picture when you become a doctor. You picture these life-saving moments. You walk into the room. What's happening? Clear, shock, they get up, thank you. That's why, you know, that's what you want, is to have those kind of stories. I never thought as a kid, I want to be a doctor, so when I don't save somebody, they thank me. Although I did not ultimately get the job done with Mr. Washington, I can get the job done again tomorrow with other people. And so that's what we will do. We will go there, we'll look at each patient, and we'll get some people closer to going home again. This documentary is from the Miami Herald, miamiherald.com. Makes you stop and think. Florida has been out of control for its existence, but particularly with something this serious. You know, we don't hear from these people. People don't see the hospital workers, the staff. You know, this should be seen by everybody. All right, there's a few more parts. Let's see if we can see the next one here. I hate this thing. I wanted to 
do it, but they don't have any double XL money suits. No, they only have small, medium, and large. They're fat shaming. Where's your shield, Denise? Let me get an inside of the trauma room. Back three or four. Three? Everything today is according to size of bunny suits. Yes. Yes. Yes, we're reintubating the patient. Okay. You're not intubating. Uh oh. Ooh. Do you need skinny people? We either need skinny people or a bigger suit. Oh man, I don't want to say what this is like. Okay, it's like putting on a small something else on a big something else. One circumstance? Oh. Oh. Hey, 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 hey. oh, he's awake. Yeah. He's talking. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, um, oh my god. Acidosis makes for easy intubation. Again. Today is 14 days from the moment that I FaceTimed uh, the COVID positive patient. He was initially COVID negative. When I rounded on him, I didn't like what I saw. I repeated the test and he ended up being positive the next day. Today I'm completely asymptomatic. I feel fine. I missed you. Tomorrow I am going to get my labs drawn and I'm gonna see what kind of antibodies I have. So I'm here at my buddy, Dr. Ronson, set his office, and he's agreed to draw my blood, and we're gonna send it to LabCorp for the antibody test. There are two antibodies, IgM, IgG. IgM, you're acutely infected. IgG, you're supposedly building immunity to it. Cross my fingers, I have the IgG, and I have the peace of mind that I probably did have the virus without any major ill effect to me. And I don't have to worry so much about bringing it home. What happens if the IgM is positive? That means I've just gotten it. But it's not an FDA approved test. So is it accurate? I think I would take the time off and have the nasal swabbing done every day. And then if after five days, not sick, five negative tests, I would burn LabCorp down and go back to work. Sounds like a reasonable answer. Tonight, so many states making those difficult decisions. Do we reopen now and how quickly and how do we do it without putting lives at risk? 18 states still have the case rate going up. Florida, the reopening there underway, heading down, but you see some bumps as you go through the five-day moving average. Governor Ron DeSantis announcing phase one of reopening across the state. Here in South Florida, though, we are excluded from phase one because of the high number of COVID-19 cases. Hospitals are the exception. Hospitals are open statewide to resume elective surgeries. Some hospitals are now just beginning to offer those elective surgeries once again. That is a major move yeah. forward, but are we ready? I'm not going to take my mask off because other people sitting here. Right now we're anticipating a non-COVID surge. The whole Jackson system will open for elective surgeries. So we anticipate a small surge from surgical cases. But then meanwhile, we had a bunch of sick patients and we're still dealing with a less number of ICU beds than we're used to. So now it's, it's just a jammed up situation. All right, what do you got here? All right, so this is a patient that went into a cardiac arrest 
Unfortunately, right now we're in the emergency room. This is something we had to start here in the emergency. The ICU right now is currently full. We're trying to prepare a hospital for two different surges. The non-COVID surge is likely to happen first, but then if we get the COVID surge and now we are full capacity from the non-COVIDs, that's even worse. But we are down today to our last COVID ICU patients. Yep, we got one out today, so we're down to just two more. Isolation works, and when you stop isolating, it makes it a lot worse. So I got a text from Ron, who drew my blood the other day, Dr. Sinceta, that the blood results are in. Scariest idea, IgM comes back positive only. Am I about to get sick? I haven't developed an immunity yet. What the hell do I do with this information? Hey, what's going on, bro? I'm going to get my... Uh shirt on so it looks like I'm a real doctor. Hey Ron. <laughs> well okay so I have good news in that you do not have exposure to the coronavirus. Excellent. So that your your antibody is negative, okay? All of them okay. all across the board? Well it just it just checked IgG. Oh uh, Quest doesn't do IgM? No it didn't do IgM it didn't do IgG. Oh well that's useless. Well then what do you have? Do you have like uh, any symptoms? No, it's the question of if I'm a silent carrier and all that stuff. There's a big difference between not getting that IgM. God damn. All right, bro. Thanks a lot, man. Wow. Bye -bye. Yeah. Yay. No info. Except that I definitely and are not immune. am not immune. <laughs> that is the only information we have. So that's all we've concluded from all that. I could still have it and I could still get it. Even though things are looking better and numbers are going down, things are gonna change when things open up. And we have to stay diligent because you never know when the, when, when, when the wave is gonna hit. And yeah, Georgia, after opening up, a thousand new cases oh, really? in the last really? 24 hours, yeah. Hi. <laughs> what are you doing? What am I doing? I'm working. <laughs> Mother's Day is now less than one week away, and we cannot gather. But Mother's Day is about celebrating those who gave us life itself. And this year, we are especially grateful for that. <laughs> Say bye. Say bye, Say bye Bobby. Bye. I definitely fear that there's going to be a spike in COVID cases. I hope that it's not a big enough spike that it's going to affect my family. But if I have to wake up on Mother's Day and he's not here, it's going to be really hard. It's going to be really hard. Hello? Can you see me? This tooth has like a cap. I guess I keep putting too much stress on it. It's not strong enough and it keeps popping off. I pop one of them off cutting potatoes. Just mm, looks like this. I don't want you to not understand the full issue I'm dealing with. This weekend was actually a nice, normal, quiet weekend. 
We didn't get any new COVID ICU patients. And I'm hopeful we're gonna empty the COVID ICU in the next day or so. And if there is no COVID surge in the next two weeks, we will open back up to normal ICU level of care. Phase one of reopening Florida starts today and it allows restaurants to basically open their dining rooms to about 25% of capacity. South Florida though, not included yet, but some parks have reopened and that's already causing problems. Police are saying that people got a little bit too excited, started to cluster. In two days, they issued about 1,500 warnings to park goers who were not wearing face masks and were not social distancing. Black Point Marina forced to close hours after opening, after quickly reaching capacity. For these three counties to get to phase one, people have to follow the rules. Excuse me, you need to wear a mask. Do you understand that? This where is he now? Let's find that guy. Did anybody ever identify him? Man, thank you for the dinner. I appreciate it. She was playing with Titi and she hit herself. Right now? No, before my parents' house. It wasn't even that big a deal. But I was rubbing her head and I go, ay, 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 ay. And that's it. She's been telling everybody that she has a yay, yay. <laughs> She's like her mom. She doesn't like to sleep. No, her mom can't sleep. There's there's a difference. Her mom loves to sleep. She's just... I promise you, I'm so looking forward to this endoscopy because I can actually sleep. Really? <laughs> I'm so looking forward to it. Sorry, Abba. Bye, me girl. And I love you. All the cards played out right. We have no COVID right now in the ICU, so I'm not worried about being in contact with COVID patients. It's time for me to go home. I'm excited. I'm like ready to go to bed so I can do my 12 hour shift tomorrow and go back. <laughs> I'm gonna put this in my bag. I do believe there's a God, but this profession does put a lot of out in your mind sometimes you see people that just driving with their family or something they get hit by a drunk driver and they die and the drunk driver survives and you just don't have an answer for it I'm thankful for everything that I have my healthy kids my healthy wife but we go back to, you know, the Washington case. Miss Washington lost her son and her husband. Does she really deserve to lose both? I asked God, why didn't he take me too? Because everything in my world revolved around my family. I'm ironing my husband's clergy shirt. I'm taking it to uh, the funeral home so that they can dress my husband. But when it's all said and done, I think the Lord put us here to help one another. And I just pray that for the ones that didn't lose their loved ones, that they love each other a little bit more. Love will stop this.
For many people across South Florida still out of work, it can be a struggle to put a meal on the table. But food drives are helping those in need. We shine a light on the helping hands out there throughout South Florida. We did this from the bottom of our heart. Problem. Patient zero, our first vent patient with COVID, admitted 46 days ago. He was discharged to rehab today. And it is a special moment for all of us when we get to see success. I'm looking forward to seeing him when he walks in here, shaking his hand and thanking him for battling the way he did, which allows us to feel the wind, feel good about the fight, and keep going. The U.S. Navy's Blue Angels are heading here to South Florida as part of their America Strong series of flights. The Navy team, along with the Air Force Thunderbirds, have been touring America to uplift spirits. It's time for me to go home. It's already been a month. I think I've been out of the house long enough. You're coming home? You're coming home for a break? Can I hug you? <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm not leaving. I promise I'm not leaving. No. I think the day that I'm able to be with my family finally. I'm not leaving. It's kind of like a congratulations. We made it with nobody in our family getting affected by this virus. We made it through the first phase. It's like a sick joke. When Julio surprised me this week that he was home, I was like, oh my God, my life is back to normal. I'm okay, we're okay. This is gonna be the best Mother's Day. This is the best. This is by far the worst Mother's Day, I think. Sorry, baby. It's okay. What is he though? I'm so sorry. That's fine. We are 95 last on. Um, and you close. When I found out, I dropped to my knees. And I prayed, I think, harder than I've ever prayed in my life. Oh, please. Please just let my kids be okay. Yesterday, Julio came into my office with this news. Elizabeth got a COVID pretest back, and it turned out she was positive. So, decided to have him and his kids tested. Julio was negative. The kids uh, all came back negative. Um, and so we'll see how Elizabeth does. And on top of it, today's Mother's Day. So, probably the worst Mother's Day in history. Remember, you can't hug grandma and grandpa, okay? Okay. We can't, we have to stay 10 feet away from them, all right? Okay. How many feet? 
Ten. Good girl. Hey, Mama. Happy Mother's Day. Are you at one seven two seven five? Yes, we are. Oh. Oh, if you're bored and not doing anything, you want to come down? <laughs> Sorry to send out a version of all this, but yeah. oh, no, this is beautiful. Absolutely. Oh, yellow concrete barrier between us. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's a visual good. reminder. Visual. <laughs> back. It's been a good month since we got together with all of our loving family there. You want to blow Grandma a kiss? No, no, no. It meant just so, so much to see them all alive and well and healthy because our son working in the hospital every waking moment. I worry about him. Love you, Mama. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. Say bye. Say bye, Grandma. There's just unbelievable loss and sorrow for so many families right now. And all the mothers in our country right now who are wishing they could have what we had today, we wish we could give it to all of them. I wouldn't have ever even imagined in a million years that my husband and my son would be gone. I never would have even. I mean, I could, could, can't wrap my brain around them not being here. No one even would even imagine losing their loved ones to such a horrible, horrible. I mean, they, my son was so sick. I mean, he couldn't even walk. He went to the doctor and he was falling all over the place trying to take the x-ray. It was just, you know, senseless. I miss them. Like, my heart is broken. <laughs> my heart is just broken. <laughs> Even though I feel pain, and this is a Mother's Day that really is a lonely day, I feel their love because beyond a shadow of a doubt, anybody that knew us knew it wasn't nothing but love in here. Nothing, nothing but love. I feel sorry for all the mothers that have to go through this, their children, because I know their pain. I thought I was taking all the precautions possible. I stayed out of the house for a month. It's, it sucks. It's unbelievable like that we're going through this. We got a gift for mommy. Puppy's gonna give it to you and then you're gonna say happy Mother's Day and you're gonna give it to her. Here you go. Okay. And hold this. Why? All right. Give it to mommy and say happy Mother's Day. Go. All right. Give that to mommy. Give that to mommy. Go do. Give that to mommy. Give that to mommy. Thank you, Marty. Oh, stop. Which one's that? I can't hug anybody. <laughs> I don't know which one. <laughs> nope. Titi, Titi, Julito, Julito, come here. What's the matter? Hi. Hi. <laughs> what are you doing? You dancing for Dada? Give me a kiss. No, no, mommy, no, mommy, no. I love you. <laughs> Behave good, okay? Uh, mommy, don't touch mommy. Mommy's sushi. Dile, I love you, mom. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. Bye, Emmy girl. Love you. Quiero un besito, mami. A mami. Dile bye. So 
are you, what are you gonna do? I'm probably gonna have to go to the apartment tonight. Why? Babe, we've already discussed this. I don't feel safe. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. What does it make sense, baby? You're gonna be, you literally just hug and kiss and say hi to everybody. You're gonna be there when you leave, when you get the test tomorrow. What is you sleeping there? Have, like, you can help your mom with Emmy. Emmy wakes up every hour. Okay, I'll go to my parents' house. It just, like, it makes me feel better. What don't, like. I don't, I don't understand. Like, I, I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying, and maybe I shouldn't have done what I did. Baby, test negative. Babe, I'm not arguing about this again. I'm really not. Like. They can do not have me. I understand There's that. It's a different scenario. The same reasons why I took the approach that I took to come home and not affect you and the kids, now it's my parents, which are 60. Like, I, I don't understand. The fact that you already tested negative, that's what I'm saying. That doesn't mean a damn thing, Elizabeth. I could be exposed any day. So could they. But it's not on your conscience that it was me. Babe, is it on your conscience that I got exposed? Uh, of course it is. Oh you don't even have it. Maybe I'm already negative. Maybe me coming home on Saturday was too soon. Maybe I should have never came home. How do you know you didn't get it the moment that I walked through that door and I gave you a hug and a kiss when I decided to come home? How do you know I wasn't positive then? Exactly. It's my mother's day. I'm not gonna do this. All right, bro. I've had a really tough day. I know. And I'm not gonna argue with you over it. Alright. We're good. We didn't plan for this. Like, this wasn't supposed to happen. Very powerful from the Miami Herald. You can see it yourself at MiamiHerald.com. Florida, I'm telling you. And of course, then we get millions of people coming in and out of here, uh, which just, uh, you know, exacerbates the situation. People don't realize that literally millions and millions and millions and millions and billions and a trillion quadrillion people come in and out of here like every hour i mean from all over not all over the country all over the world everybody's coming here so how do we how do you track that numbers that are here people that were infected here brought it back people brought it here you know and then all these healthcare workers and their families and their mothers and their families families uh and Ron DeSantis can't breathe. My family was already divided for a month. I came back home and almost exactly a week to the day, my wife tested positive. Having COVID is scary. I'm blessed that I don't have it as severe as some patients that are on ventilators right now in hospitals. But at the same time, I'm questioning everything. She says she keeps sweating, constant headaches. She doesn't feel like eating. So I don't know if it's that she's like depressed. I don't know if it's the coronavirus that's doing something. Like my neck hurts. And I'm like, oh my God, is that? So I'm like Googling signs of COVID symptoms and how early on our severe case like it's just I'm like losing my mind over this I'm trying to stay sane but I'm like I think I'm losing my mind a little bit over it all I think the mind is a very powerful thing so if she does get depressed and she doesn't want to eat 
I feel like she's gonna really start showing symptoms and she's really gonna get sick. I'm terrified. I'm terrified. I'm terrified. Inside the COVID unit. Okay, Ooh, my face looks good. So as of yesterday, the COVID ICU, the 24-bed ICU was completely closed. Checking out the closed COVID ICU. No more patients. These 24 state-of-the-art perfect ICU rooms are now empty with no immediate plan to use them on anything other than a COVID patient in fear of getting another surge and having to move everyone around again. Yeah, hey. Hey, you got ICU oh, nurses over here. Oh, I can use every single. Uh -huh. why, why aren't you in the ICU? I can't do the ICU. Because we got no ICU patients. No, we got to bring more data right back. Good job. The patients on the medical floor with COVID are stable. The floor still has 18 COVID positive patients. So we are still getting active COVID infections, just at this time, none of them meet ICU criteria, so they're all staying on the floor. I just found out today that our patient zero, the first patient that we intubated, was discharged last week to a nursing home. I think you have the video of everybody clapping for him. Uh, I have heard that he has been readmitted to Jackson Memorial with a new positive nasal swab. Yeah, it's weird. He, he the positive. Yeah. Yeah, that's really scary. <laughs> yes. The fact that he converted after however long it was. And maybe symptomatic. Yeah. I mean, this guy had to have gotten better because he did get off the vent. Uh, he, we had multiple negative tests and now he's back in Jackson Memorial with new symptoms and a new positive test. And I, I don't even know what, I, I, I don't even know what to make of that. I mean, if this is really a situation where you can just keep getting this disease over and over, I, I, I don't see how, I don't see how we survive. Out of parts of the country trying to return to normal as some states ease restrictions. Mayor Carlos Jimenez announced that some businesses will reopen by May 18th. Restaurants, barbershops, malls, retail stores, factories, warehousing, logistics, all those things are going to be opening up. It's true that coronavirus cases are falling in many of the hardest hit areas, but an unreleased FEMA report finds that coronavirus infection rates in some cities spiked dramatically in early May after many states loosened restrictions. Dozens gathered in South Beach demanding that public spaces like beaches reopen along with the economy. A woman protesting the closures is arrested after sitting on the Santa Miami Beach. The protest, real protest is right here. This is a brave woman right here. They are arresting her. Liberate the beach! This is America! Freedom! Hey. Avery's getting taken to the pediatrician tomorrow to get tested. Why? She, um, she's clammy, she's sweating, she's had headaches, her stomach is bothering her. So, the pediatrician, and she explained, like, the situation, and she's like, look, my daughter's been in contact with her aunt, and her aunt tested positive, and whatever, and the doctor's like, yeah, you definitely need to bring her, um, bring her around the back tomorrow, and we'll swap her. In the doctor's office. My niece is having headaches, nausea, so my sister in law is gonna take her to go get tested. Love you. I love you too. We were actually in contact with her on Wednesday of last week because it was her sister's birthday. 
so we did the drive-by and Elizabeth got off and said hi to everybody and I mean we didn't we didn't hug none of them or we didn't kiss any of them um we kept our distance I don't I don't want to think that one of the kids got infected because of us but you start questioning if it was stupid of us to get down and say hi to the family I went yesterday to get tested for antibodies of COVID-19 and today it came back negative. You've never had it, you don't have antibodies, your wife that has been quarantining has it and and I didn't give it to her. I think this whole time I've, in my brain I've thought that I have antibodies to it and that's why I haven't gotten it after such a long time of being in a unit. Now I gotta be extra careful because I don't affect my parents. You know how to turn it on? Press hard. There you go. Oh, you turn it off. I got it. Go! a lot of stress but I mean I have to put it on my shoulders my wife did it for a month Titi say hi to mommy hi mommy no mommy's here in the camera hi Titi hi Titi she was quarantining at home I was in a COVID unit Hi, mommy. Hi, Chuba girl. Who ends up with the COVID? My wife. It's a tripod for her phone. Is it heavy? Oh, you don't touch it! It's set up! What the hell are you thinking? Once it's set up, you don't... What the... Who the hell does that? All right, bed two. Two. Gia bleeds. She got two units of blood. Today, we have uh, 20 COVID patients, and COVID ICU is still closed. Okay. Mm -hmm. Julio's working today. He's doing charge. What? So the prescription has to be faxed. He's handling his job well. He's, he's, he's looking pretty good. Hello, dear. How are you? I don't know what's happening in Miami. I think I heard something about restaurants opening up May 18th. I don't watch news anymore, so I don't know. I can't even read Facebook much anymore because half the ads are how the Democrats are destroying this, the other half of the Republicans, and how everyone's blaming everybody else. And, and then the other ridiculous quotes how come you can't get COVID at Publix but you can get COVID at a hair salon I I, I can't I can't factor that in um, I look for the Facebook posts with my friends with their families those kinds of things I just posted on my Facebook today a video from home that I got from my brother of my son taking his first steps and I was here. Come on, come on. Come on. Yeah. 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 Yes. Would have liked to have been there, but you know, it's it's an unfortunate part of the job. I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing at work. Just wanted to come on here and um, give a big, big thank you to everyone that's checking up on me. You guys are honestly keeping my spirits up. I feel okay. Um, shortness of breath, nothing major. 
mainly it's just headaches, body aches, um, sore throat. So it's like a really bad flu. Um, but I'm okay and I, I'm positive that I'm just going to keep getting better and this is all going to be over soon. But I just wanted to say thank you guys. I'm back at the apartment that Jackson provided that I was previously staying at. Since I was working three days in a row, I didn't want to come back to my parents' house. I think it really hit me when I walked into this apartment and I realized that everybody was separated. my wife in one house, two kids with my parents, one kid in another house. So right now my kids don't have either one of the parents. My head is like throbbing. Just like with all the scenarios that you start thinking about that could possibly happen or what could go wrong. Um, so. Excuse me. <clears throat> so then start moving around, stop laying in bed. All right, bro. She said since she started laying down, she's been feeling the palpitations again. Um, what was I saying? I know why we need to reopen. There's people out there that are losing their houses, jobs. I just hope that people take this virus seriously and protect themselves because they're not, they're not seeing what we're seeing. They're not seeing the families that have been separated and they're not seeing the organs completely shutting down on these patients from one moment to the next and we have no control over it, like no matter what we do. The virus just takes over. Miami-Dade and Broward crossing a major milestone today. Both counties opening for business. Retailers, restaurants, and other businesses in some Miami-Dade cities open their doors on day one of phase one of reopening the county. <laughs> While we keep moving to a new normal to restore our vibrant economy, we will always continue to make safety and health the top priority for all 2.8 million residents of Miami-Dade County. Yesterday, Julio's wife started feeling chest tightness and so we brought her in to the ER to get evaluated. And I figured since she's here, let's just repeat the test. And it turned out negative. So now, again, what do you do? Do you say, all right, I don't have it anymore. Uh, bring the kids back. I'm not going to risk the kids like that. So I told Julio, let's get the rapid antibody test. I have a friend in Miami Beach who knows somebody who's doing them in his office. I'm going to try to get the information so she can get both the IgM and the IgG. I think if those two are negative and we do another swab of the nose and now we have two negative tests, I think that, that test was a false positive. So I just took the finger fake test for the COVID antibodies. And according to the results, it was a five minute test. It said um, negative for both IgG and IgM test. Julio's calling me. So I just spoke to Andrew. He says he would feel a lot more confident with one more negative to let the kids inside the house. Because now you have four different tests that are telling you're negative. You got two blood works and two swabs that are telling you you're negative. Okay. I'm just so nervous about it because I know that I, 
I had symptoms. I didn't not have symptoms. I know you keep saying I didn't, but I did. All right. Come to the U.S. Now the thought is, what if the first time was a false positive? That's frustrating to me. I just lost being able to hold my kids for the past week and a half for a possible false positive. I had symptoms. Were those symptoms really there? I don't think you can fake feel a headache. You can't fake feel body aches. But at the same time, if all these things are saying that I don't have antibodies, what does that mean? I, I don't know. I'm so frustrated. <laughs> Did that feel like that was deep enough? Yeah. I don't want to get my hopes up only because I've been getting my hopes up a lot and then something happens or this happens or whatever. So I'm, I'm gonna try to stay positive like I've been trying to do but I'm not gonna get my hopes up either. <laughs> Why is she doing that for? Amy, Amy, what you doing? I've been taking care of my grandkids for 10 days. I can tell that they are emotionally confused. Amy, let's go. Vamos. Titi, let's go. Yeah. Yeah, you coming with me. Especially Julito, the trio. Come on, come on. Why are you mad? Why are you mad? I guess because he missed his dad and his mom. What the hell I told you about being mad? Huh? Mm. Don't. Titi, don't. Mm. He doesn't understand what is happening, you know, even if I try to explain that his mom is sick. Pulido, you're gonna bring that. Pulido, stop, stop. Mm. So, you know, it's being, it's being hard. Good morning. I just wanted to follow up and see if my COVID results came back. When is this test Yesterday. Should I be concerned? Because I'm worried that the test might have been misplaced or something. Because I usually see it uploaded the past two times. This one never yes, did. I don't see it. I don't see it under. Do you have a medical record from this time around? You have the discharge statement? Yes, I have because the last two times they literally populated like within an hour. I'm pretty sure they lost it. This is extremely frustrating. Hey. Yeah. So Elizabeth just called and they just told her now that there's no record of her getting swapped. When I looked at it, I didn't see like an active order. There was an order from the other day. But when I tried to reorder it this morning, it did say that there was an active COVID test from 518. Okay. All right, sounds good. Thanks. All right. Well, we already know that you know that this is the story of your life. You're probably the only person in Miami to have a false positive. So. Might as well just continue. Why do you keep saying I have a false positive? Because, I mean, everything else has come back negative. Okay. Are we, are we done? I'm going what? inside. Huh? I'm gonna go inside. I don't feel good. What? Because I don't. I just got home from uh, Costco and logged in. I didn't think it'd be back this early, but the results are back. All right. Go ahead. I got a bad connection over here. 
Are you there? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. Julio? Hello? Julio? Well, are you really doing this to f with me right now? <laughs> uh, it's negative, man. All right. I'm 18. Negative. And I know she went, I know, I know that nurse went deep in there. Uh, you've got two negatives. You've got the blood test for what it's worth that says there's absolutely nothing going on. I think you're in the clear. Okay. For sure the kids can get in there safely. Okay. Perfect. All right. All right, Doc. Thank you. Right. Yep, I'll talk to you. All right, bye. My my opinion is uh, honestly we do clean the house because even if you're in the clear now, why are you crying? I'm just stressed out. Why? Because I am. I'm stressed. This. What, what do you mean? Why? I get it, but it's done. Okay. I can I can technically hug you already, right? Can I give you a hug now? No. You don't want me to hug you. <laughs> why don't you want me to hug you? You want me to beg to hug you? You want me to get on my knees and ask me? Can you please, please let me hug you? Please let me hug you. Please, I beg you. Please. <laughs> Actually, kind of sucks with that mask. You should wear that. All right. Um. Can I just go get the kids? Mhm. Mm Let's go. What? <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, this mask is the worst. I've been crying, so I don't want to take it off. <laughs> Mommy's not sick So your mom's negative. Yay. We're done with all this. <laughs> Stop paying me with alcohol. <laughs> to the house, I agree. Welcome home, Emmy girl. Come on. Go, Emmy girl, go. You remember what this place looks like? Tata's not here. Tata's not here. Best day ever. Best day ever. This is the best day ever? Yeah. Yeah? Alright, COVID ICU is still empty. Let's go see the COVID floor. 
we don't have any ICU level of care. COVID's in our ICU intensive care unit is still closed. How's it going? They're covered. Oh, I'm covered. I ain't giving COVID to my family. <laughs> Hell no. I didn't recognize you. Yeah, again. It's not until I open my mouth that people recognize me. 65 watching TV. This is 7 on all America stable. We've seen the curve flatten, right, with new cases. We haven't seen it drop down. So, but what I've seen and everybody else has seen is that uh, we're not seeing the sick ones anymore. 70's good. 71. On the phone. We have not had a vented patient in a while. And we are all kind of dumbfounded by that. Stable. But it's a good thing. It's hope. Could be hope. It has the qualifications of appearing to be hope. It's definitely nice to face this COVID with people that you know that are watching out for your best interest. You ready? And not just working with you because they have to work a seven to seven shift. Happy birthday to you. Dr. Andrew has been more than helping me out. Daddy. Like from the moment that my wife tested positive, He's literally guided me through everything. Julio's gonna be one of my employees someday. I wrote him a letter to help get him into nurse practitioner school. He's been accepted. He walks around like he doesn't have a heart, but this has really completely changed the way that I look at him. Right. Let's go put on pajamas. And I'll never tell him to his face. I don't wanna admit it. I don't want him to know that I admit it, but he is somebody that I will need to keep close to me for the rest of my career. Like, I don't know how I will ever repay him for doing what, it, what he's done for me. In America, we all are connected Amen. Americans, we're a family. And the survival of America depends on us caring for each other, looking out for each other. So Because if one person is affected, all of America is going to suffer. It's hard. You taught me how to be strong, and I'll be strong. I will be strong. I'll always love you, darling. Till we meet again, I know we'll meet again. My son, my son, oh, my son. Derek, it's almost unbearable, but you would want mommy to be strong, mommy being strong.
we definitely have not won the battle with coronavirus. Deaths in the U.S. from COVID-19 are fast closing in on 100,000 COVID-19 deaths. I think we've contained it. But I think unbelievable people are dying to get out and it's going to be a little bit more reckless. There's not worry a surge of infections could come in regions where large groups gather. The CDC today said it is very likely there will be a second wave of the virus here. It's scary. It's scary that a second wave might be stronger than the first. From the Miami Herald. Tough to watch. But it's important. We're going through a pandemic. <clears throat> and particularly here in Florida, where it's the Yahoo State, anything goes, all the knuckleheads we got that live here and all the yahoos that come to visit. Was that the last segment? Okay. There's no red light on that one. It's recording. I like the red lights. Do you want to see that it's recording? <laughs> no, I want a red light. <laughs> okay, let's begin. Start with a record rise in coronavirus cases across the state. This actually marks the third day in a row that the state has set a new single day record for the number of new coronavirus cases. This whole thing just sucks. Yesterday we decided to finally see my mom and her husband again after two months. In the afternoon my brother had a fever so I brought him here and <coughs> sure enough he's positive. Me being positive for COVID was not even a thought 48 hours ago. And the fact that now I am is like, God, not again, like. I didn't feel right when I woke up this morning. So I just got swabbed and so I should know soon. And who knows what it'll mean for me to have, if I have to get out of work. <clears throat> Such a busy time right now too. The COVID cases have spiked from eight a week ago to 18. I'm doing video of how hard everybody's working over here. Really? Yeah, look at me. I'm like, I'm like first time I sat down. You're actually working. Yeah, thank first you very much. First time I sat you down. Know that. <laughs> The spike in coronavirus cases has many wondering whether Florida's economy will be shut down again. People are not taking social distancing rules like they should. Meanwhile, there are some studies that are suggesting that Florida could be the next epicenter for COVID-19. You I think? Mean, we just got sort of back to normal. Now we're likely going to have to go backwards. It's so crazy. It's just so crazy. It's a shame that we're back. Uh, almost to square one. I know I haven't come to terms with the fact that I'm not going to see them for two weeks. This is basically day one. Inside the COVID unit battling the coronavirus pandemic in Miami. The surge. So I'm negative. I'm completely asymptomatic. And, you know, I watched my brother go from normal to a small fever to now he's having body aches. So I'm sure if the virus is in me or coming, it'll present in a very similar way. Three, four. DNR. Really should, needs to be hospice. My wife, who thinks she may have it, kind of just has a sore throat and maybe a little bit of a stuffy head, but she's not very ill. 
two liters. Very comfortable. I'm very concerned about what going home is going to be like. Watching everybody, looking at the kids, checking everybody's temperatures all the time, banging on my brother's door, making sure he's not one of these cases that just collapses on the ground. Um, it's very, very scary. You know, I've had, I've been placing multiple phone calls and texts to him and my wife every day just to make sure. Because I've seen them deteriorate here at work. Yeah, she is very sick. She is do not resuscitate, so we cannot intubate her. She is probably not going to survive. And it's a real negative thought for me to wonder if they're deteriorating at home the way they're deteriorating here. Now that is something that was just launched from the police department, and it might be the first sign that we've seen of tear gas. Anger, frustration pouring into the streets of America. For many, the death of George Floyd only piling on to the mounting anger over the deaths of Ahmaud Arbery and Breonna Taylor. I can't breathe! Gathering in the midst of a pandemic, protesters say they are now forced to fight a different virus, racism. If you had any idea that preachers, white and black, was going to line up in a pandemic when we told to stay inside and we come out and march in the streets at the risk of our health, you done took your knee off his neck. Eric Bernard Sharpley was the most gifting, caring, loving, a remarkable son. He will be deeply missed, but will be forever in our hearts, minds, and souls as we were in here. No mother should have to make the choice between, oh, would I want my child to die from uh, the coronavirus or police brutality. Well, I choose the virus because at least my son went quick. And then Derek gained an example of what it is to love. The coronavirus, police brutality have really affected African Americans disproportionately and they're fed up. Police officers have sworn, just like doctors and nurses, they took an oath to do the right thing. It's ironic that the healthcare workers are over there putting their life on the line to save Americans. And some of these police officers think that that's not their job. We're there for you. Nancy Diane, we love you too. We love you It makes me deeply sad that the coronavirus and this police brutality is going on. I'm deeply saddened that both things are happening and it shouldn't be. That's the only thing I keep saying, it shouldn't be. Oh, fly away, oh glory, fly away when I die. Hallelujah, fly, fly, oh, how fly away. I can't figure out this damn computer thing. This thing's so, so complicated. Join with computer audio. Emmy had a fever the day that Elizabeth tested positive. So I was 100% that Emmy got it. So... I couldn't have them with my mom because then I didn't want my parents to catch it. So I was like, I'm going to have to take the risk and I'm going to have to watch them, you know? I mean, I've been with them the whole time unless I go in, into the room where the queen is quarantined into her castle. <laughs> yeah. I requested this vacation December of last year. So yeah, this time was already set up. Ever since then, has been daddy daycare. <laughs> bueno, happy Father's Day to Julio. Thank you. Elizabeth already had it once and she came out fine. I'm not really too worried about her having it. Emmy's been good. No fever either. Wait, All right, so let's open your present. 
I mean, no, no. I've never thought that it was this hard to take care of kids. I'd rather do a 24-hour shift <laughs> before I do this all over again. I make breakfast, and before I know it, they're asking me for lunch. I'm like, what's it? I just made breakfast. <laughs> wow. Uh, yeah, it's mine. You match the shirt. I, I can't tell you. I don't think I would have ever had this experience of getting to know my kids the way that I am right now. No, I'm just trying on my shoes. I, I do want to be at work, especially when I read an article today that COVID numbers are going up. You know, I wonder how Jackson South is doing. I wonder if they need help, you know, if they opened up the unit again. Like, all these thoughts start going back into my head. But at the end of the day, like, family always comes first. You could work a thousand hours, but, like, if you don't have a home to come back to, like, what's the point of going to work every day, you know? (laughs) The most significant increase in cases yet as Florida's COVID-19 spike continues. Now, more than 5,500 new positive tests. Recent protests also raising concerns over possible transmission. We're not going to be announcing any sort of rollbacks, nor will we be announcing an implementation or re-implementation of a stay-at-home order. Juggling a health crisis with the economic crisis, a game local officials don't want to lose. At a commissioner's meeting in Florida's Palm Beach County, anger erupted after a unanimous vote to make masks mandatory. This is a planned demic. This is totally political and you know it. I think we have over 40 patients already. I went from eight to 40 in a little over a week. It's crazy. Melinda finally got her test back today and she has COVID. Unfortunately, the baby had a barking cough this morning, and I just repeated the test again. If I test positive, I'll go home, obviously quarantine myself. I could do some telehealth stuff where I can make all the decisions from home. That was fun. That was fun. Thank you, sweetie. I'd say it's 50-50 right now that I have COVID-19. It would it just if anyone would would be asymptomatic, it wouldn't be me. It just shouldn't be me. This hour is really taking a long time. All right, they keep trying to give me the news, so I think it's back, but I haven't picked up. Okay. And we refresh. Positive. How am I asymptomatic? I'm not a machine. I am a machine. I am a machine. I got to take this now. I can't ignore it. Talk to you later. (laughs) All right. So the sodium is still a little low. We're still doing 3%. Our surge in the beginning was more based on the poor testing. Patients sitting around for a week. Are you calling someone? Yeah. But now I'm looking at the patient. So the numbers weren't that bad. It was just a little bit of mayhem trying to figure out what was going on and waiting. And then it got better. And there was a huge sense of, so we did do everything right. Very good. What do we got? 275. Let's try this side. And then we started seeing the number eight incrementally increasing. 77. And then, boom. The virus has killed more than 130,000 people nationwide. South Florida becoming one of the country's latest coronavirus hotspots. Miami-Dade County seeing record numbers of new coronavirus cases. First day back, this is now the new COVID ICU. We actually have COVID ICU cases all over. But good record. morning. We got somebody really sick record over numbers. here in 11. Huh? We have one empty bed in the COVID ICU. And in the hospital, we now have over 65 COVID patients. Hey, we got to go intubate 15. This is definitely a surge, but the question is, are we still surging? ICU bed capacity in Miami-Dade County. 
now at nearly 92% and rising. Florida reported more than 15,000 new cases yesterday. That shatters the one-day record for any state. 73 people a day dying from coronavirus. Today we had 96 COVID patients. I had a sick lady. She just passed out. We got the intubation quickly, but literally her cell phone was on and her breakfast was in front of her and that's how quickly she just became hypoxic, oxygen levels went low. You know, hopefully she makes it, she's 49. Florida has become the new epicenter, not only in the country, but in the world. The increase coming even as phased reopening the world. in the Sunshine State is Epicenter ongoing. of the world. Oh, it seems uh, be getting worse by the day. I've been waking up like at 3, 30, 4 o'clock in the morning. The only thing I can think about is like work and if the patients made it, if the patients didn't make it, if we got new admissions. This is our COVID ICU. ICU is completely full and has been for the last month. These are all the ICU beds. I had this one patient yesterday. He was actually telling me that he was one of those that would say that this virus was just a government conspiracy. Oh God. And he's like, and let me tell you, after I've had this, I thought I was going to die. And this is now also COVID ICU. We are probably seeing a death every other day. One was 45. She's been here for 15 days. But I go to check on her, and she'd give me a little dance. But then a few days ago, she stopped dancing. And so they intubated her, and then she developed shock. And today she passed. The virus has killed more than 130,000 people nationwide. New York was the leader for a long time. What got to me about Brooklyn was the way they were dying. They had ice trucks for the bodies, and they were just dropping like flies. And I, I'm not ready for that, and I don't, I don't want to see that. California and Florida have now passed New York in terms of the number of cases. Right now, we have three dead bodies in the uh, COVID ICU with nowhere to put them because the uh, morgue is full. It was kind of shocking. We, I was calling my director, seeing if there was any way that maybe we could get like a freezer truck or something in here. Yeah, I'm really going to intubate this guy. Really? Yeah, come look at him. He's got any type of stick. He's cold, cold. You leave the shift and you have a patient that's very sick and you know that pretty much the next day that patient probably won't be there. You know, and it sucks to come into work every day and think like that, you know, but that's the situation that we're in right now. ER positive. I'm positive. You know, on top of it, you get you get families thinking that we didn't do enough. I gotta go. I got a coat blue on the other side. It is painful to have to be shouted at by family members that we're not doing enough, that we're letting people die. When we're really fighting with every breath we can to keep them alive. Jesus. Florida's per capita death rate has moved from 30th in the U.S. in March to now fifth highest in the nation. 257 new fatalities bringing the total death toll in the state to 6,843. We're losing anyway because that is COVID, is that you are losing almost one out of four admitted patients. It, it wears on you. It does. Tuesday marked the third day in a row the Sunshine State recorded less than 7,500 new coronavirus infections. As the governor and local leaders say the state is moving in the right direction. Of the people that are being tested, what is the positivity rate? That number just under 14% in Miami-Dade, a significant improvement compared to weeks past, but still more than the state's average and more than double what's recommended by the World Health Organization. Three tower, no more enhanced precautions. Down to 84 patients, which means we were able to close that third tower floor to COVID. So it's allowed us to breathe a little, although the hospital still has, it's still at over capacity. So I had two similar patients in that. One was 58 and one was 60. They were both intubated, both with very loving, concerning wives. One is fortunately improving slightly daily. The other, unfortunately, passed. Myra, it's Dr. Pastewski. 
I'm so sorry, but we've been working on him for the last two hours and his heart keeps stopping. We get it back, but then it comes back weaker and weaker and we weren't able to get it back this last time. It just seems like nobody's getting off fence lately. Yeah, he's pissed. So, with the 58-year-old guy, we really need this win. Oxygenating fairly well. Um, so I'm able to lower the settings again slightly and I'll be able to tell the family some good news. Hi, Marcel, it's Dr. Pustevsky. Okay, don't cry. Don't cry, relax. Okay. Okay, get your son, but, but, but relax. We're going to take care of him. How long have we been at it? We started at 11. What was the first time you gave in? 11. All right, we resume. We're going to keep going until we get the gas. Hold. Resume. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. We didn't get the win. Hi, it's Dr. Pustevsky. Jesus. Jesus. It's tough. Family was distraught. But then... Begging me to keep fighting, keep trying, just thanking me, and I hate when people thank me when I don't end up getting the result I want. I'm promising to come when this is all over and give me a hug. It's a really shitty day. Believe me, nobody wanted this more than we all did. We all need a win so bad right now over here. And we have been focused on him as our hopeful case for a long time. I didn't anticipate the heaviness of this, how personal a lot of these cases would be. I blame my wife and kids for starting something in the empty chest, but I clearly do have something in there. I have a heart. I do. And it does not like watching people die. Hi, guys. Hi. <laughs> Hey, girl. Hi. Mira, Titi, come here. You guys went to the beach today? Yes. Yayay? No, I don't have yayay. People got yayay? Yeah, I'm helping people that have yayay. It wasn't a good day, honey? No, we lost the 58-year-old. That's horrible. Hiya, how are you doing? What are you doing? You want to was this a um, 58-year-old that was part of the staff? One of the staff members was close to the family. I see. I'm sorry. Yeah. No way. Bye. 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 Bye, Emmy Bye. 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 So quiet.
in here. Ooh. Silence is especially difficult at night because my husband always stay up till four watching CNN. And Derek, he was a night owl, so it was always life. Now it's just silence, deadening silence, deafening silence. Different. Derek always, because of his memory, his traumatic brain injury, he had to write everything down in these books. And this was his last thing that he wrote to say, when the truth does not line up with the current narrative, people tend to reject it. They want to be corrupt. And then he signed that he had wrote that quote. And it was as if my son was speaking from the grave because what he was saying is that people don't want to tell the truth because they're corrupt. Back in December or January, if he had told the truth, if President Trump had just told the truth that the coronavirus killed people, that is five times worse than the flu, I would not have went out of my house Period. Of course, my family would still be alive. If he had told the truth, they would be alive today. I've never been involved in my entire life with politics or to warn anybody or to have a say in any of it because I had my family, I had my children, I had my husband of my dreams. You can't change what has happened. But that don't mean go sit down and shut up. This is sounding the alarm. Put that mask on and do your part. I can't help my husband and my son, but I can certainly tell the people in America straighten up and look out for each other and stop this foolishness. Stop it. I can certainly, God spared me for this day to say that. I've never seen a dark time like this before. Don't touch me! I think America will find its, its rhythm again. You know, we've been through wars. We've been through some pretty bad presidents. And um, it, we bounce back. We're all gonna find our way to be happy again. That's one thing about being American is the pursuit of happiness. And that is what it really means to be an American. We all have the right to pursue happiness. The one thing that I do know is that you have people that care. I thank God for those doctors and nurses because they're the real heroes in all of this. All right, where are people? Where are my people? I am on the front lines of the coronavirus pandemic. I am on the front lines of this pandemic, yes. That's physical therapy you've been seeing. Katie, can you put in a PT eval? I go que preguntarle al médico algún problema. I want to look at the positive things that I did and the reasons why I sacrificed leaving my house and being away from my family and working all those hours. Six IMCUs, COVID? Jesus Christ. So wait, so how many more does we have coming? Four COVIDs. I don't regret any part of having to put ourselves at risk the way that we have. I don't think there's nothing special about it. <laughs> you come to my hospital, you come into my ICU, and you're sick, I'm gonna do what it takes to help you out. Even if it means risking my own life. 
The only thing I regret is I couldn't figure out a way to save them all. Was there any doubt that Florida was going to be the one to eventually end the world? No. Was there any doubt that Florida was going to be the one to the eventually end the world? The new strain of the coronavirus the has now reached the oh, Sunshine God. State. Those variants, a growing concern. Those who already had the virus are at risk of getting it again. The number is actually on the rise here in our state. And the clock is ticking. The positivity rate doubling yesterday. Every indication that we have. This is not over yet. MiamiHerald.com. This is uh, front page news. This whole documentary. Was that the last part? Was that it? Is that all she wrote? Well done. Well done. Well done. I guess that was uh, about... Two hours, 20 minutes in total. Wow. Really just uh, makes you want to scream. Was there any doubt that Florida was going to be the one to eventually end the world? Nope. We all knew it. But you see, there is something that we can do. And that is, we can remove Ron DeSantis and retire Marco Rubio. Oh, yes. <coughs> RemoveRon.org and RetireRubio.org is your resource for all the information as we rise up to get rid of these two. Join us, removeron.org, retirerubio.org. Was there any doubt that Florida was going to be the one to eventually end the world? Paul Leary coming to you from Fort Lauderdale right here in again. <laughs> right here in Broward County. Broward! That's right, Broward County. Now, how did that change? Let's cut those narcos. 